Welcome back to another video. I know it's been about two weeks since I haven't posted. I'm so sorry. I've been extremely busy and I know that is not a good enough excuse. But honestly guys, I'm so sorry. Um, we are back with another video. So hope you guys enjoy this one. I'm really kind of just winging this video. I thought I'd just shoot with the camera, turn it on, start talking, maybe update you guys what I've been up to. And most importantly, I wanted to like talk a lot about the charts. So we're gonna jump straight into the charts because the markets as of the first half of September have been pretty active, been pretty good. And I was away um, end of August and some parts of September. So again, it's just really hard for me to film and to really sit down and focus on creating content, um, something I am trying to really work on. But again, this is my fault. So I take full responsibility for that. Um, but we're gonna go straight into the market, into the charts, to show you a couple positions that I was in, some positions that I missed, and uh, we'll also do a bit of my ASR. ASR means advanced self-review. Uh, so let's get straight into it. So I essentially trade three main pairs, Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, Euro yen. I do trade other um, pairs. They're not my main top three though. Um, so in most of my videos, you usually hear me talking about Aussie, uh, EU and EJ. We're going to focus more on um, August, sorry, September, so straight into it. So I'm going to use the bar replay tool here for Aussie dollar and I'm going to show you sort of what I was looking at at the point um, of entry. And I'm going to close or hide all of this far. All right, so for this one, we've basically been pushing upwards. So we've been trending upwards, making higher highs, higher lows. And what I was looking for is in this region here, we started to sort of pause at the market as we were approaching this high um, with the wick and if we just continue forward here we can see one impulsive candle breaking this high another impulsive candle at this point i'll be looking to set um, a continuation retest where price sort of either you know something like this or price you know just goes like this so either of these levels i would take again it depends on the pair or sort of what i'm looking at but this would retest at this certain level. So here you can see a dotted line. That's basically the level that I'll be setting at two pips above or below, depending if I'm buying or selling. Um, so setting my entry here, this was at, I'd say late London session on the 2nd of September. Let's go straight, continue, get tagged in, pretty much wick and we are off. Um, at this point in terms of management, literally much as trailing it to the most recent low since I'm in a buy position. Um, so the moment it breaks to this high up here, I'll trail my stop. So we kind of move around, dance around a little bit, and then we pop up. So then I will set my stop loss here. And price does move a lot forward. And then you can see we've actually broken up here. Um, if I just quickly do, let me get rid of this. Um, and I just do that. Price actually like goes a lot higher, there was NFP. So for this position, I managed to bank just under 2.85%. Um, I did close at around midday. There was another entry here for a continuation flag where we had the push up, counter trend, breaks the low and then a retrace, which would be, which is this gray section here. So since I'm trading on a funded account, uh, obviously, I have to close my position before NFP. It's just risk not worth taking. Um, by the way, if my voice sounds a little bit funny, it's because I'm currently recovering from a cold. So just let's just ignore that. Um, so price does push up, have a massive wick, um, range around, and eventually get taken out. So at this point, price is just looking really ugly. That's all I can say. Had this fat wick here, and at this point, now the market's moving down. So this is more of a, I'd say, a trade that I didn't take personally because it just wasn't in my time zone. So I think, yeah, this was at a, this would be a 4 a.m. entry. So at the close of the 3 a.m. o'clock candle, if that makes sense. Um, technically, it's just the sell version of this missed trade here. You push down, counter trend, break and retrace, and then you get in on the retrace, which is this orange candle, which by the way is the inside bar indicator on trading view <clears throat> so that was a trade that i missed i didn't take i didn't take it didn't get involved i guess the key thing here is that when you see the wick 
The point is, is that at least it becomes range bound a little bit, but it's different when you have the wick and then the continuation flag or that setup forms a lot like tighter and quicker. If I see a wick, I like to see a, like a little bit of a range, a little bit of a consolidation. Um, so you can see here it had that here. Um, so that would definitely be a valid trade to take. Um, actually, it does end up ranging around a little bit. And it would have been a 0 point, around 0.5% trade uh, eventually being taken out. So that's pretty much the Aussie dollar side of things uh, for the first half of September. It's been pretty decent price action. Um, and now we're going to carry out my advanced self review on a um, on a software called Notion. I've got a bunch of videos looked on, on how I do that. And uh, we're going to do that now. But before we get into that, I just wanted to give a massive thank you, a massive shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And uh, Skillshare is basically this huge, massive online learning community where you can learn real life skills from real life people who actually use those skills in their day to day lives or in their in their job. Uh, so I've been pretty much um, been stuck in with their courses and I've recently taken a course, an online course um, from a guy called Thomas Frank and the course was called How to Build Habits That Last and there's a specific part in that course where he actually talks about tracking, reviewing and reflecting and I was very pleasantly reminded about that really famous quote, um, what gets measured gets managed. And I think being able to learn those productivity hacks, those tools really bleeds through into trading. And that is exactly why we're doing self review with our trades and, you know, being able to learn that outside of trading and to also grow and learn more is just incredible. And one of my favorite things about Skillshare is that there's actually no ads. So you can literally hop in um, and it's seamless. And Skillshare pretty much have this really cool thing where they're doing live online classes, which is something that I'm definitely gonna be doing more often and trying out. And it's basically as if you're experiencing real time teaching, learning with other fellow learners um, in the community. Pretty much as I'm leveling up with my trading, I'm also doing my best to learn and grow outside of that, whether that be with um, learning about productivity or mindset hacks, or anything in leadership, entrepreneurship, um, whether it's creative, not creative, analytical, whatever it may be, Skillshare is the place and the best time to join is now. So the first 1000 people who go down below in the link in the description and sign up with my link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. Um, go learn the skills, go grow, go develop yourself and uh, yeah, enjoy. So the quality is different, the background's different, that is because I'm currently abroad and yeah, the video got delayed another another week. Um, but let's quickly jump into Euro dollar. I'm sorry if the quality is completely different and also I'm also looking at the screen on my iPhone and then I know the camera's actually there. So uh, yeah, let's just jump on to this video. Okay, so we have Euro dollar and I pretty much took one trade at the start of the the month and I've also bulked this out just because I want to talk about it. Um, we're on the replay mode. Uh, this was just a very clear sort of continuation trade. Uh, this region here where we had the push up, counter trend candle, then we break, then we retrace and then I get in on that retrace which is that bullish candle there. I got in for 1.73% so if we just take this all the way back, the clear thing here is by the way, this vertical line is just to show the start of the month. So we sort of, we are pushing up, we're making higher highs and higher lows on the grand scheme of things. And what I like about here is we're breaking this high, this major high, and we're breaking it quite impulsively. Now our most recent level would then be here. So we can either take the retest or we can take a continuation trade on this level. So whatever happens first, where the price descends down here, or if we get the trade like this. So here I am watching the trade and here we have our inside bar candle and then we make another inside bar, we break that. And you can see here, this was a very obvious clear trade to take a nice and tight um, continuation trade. And I was in with 15 pips and price then just moves up. I'll trail my stops as, 
to the point where we break this high up here and it was actually very close very close to, to taking us out so it was around just under three pips and you can see price then moves up until we eventually do get tagged out also we had nfp coming up um, i think that was that was on the third so the first friday so naturally i'd either manually close a couple hours before or in this case the trade then was closed so if we just play price forward we can now see we've got wicks here we're getting consolidation in this period um, either i want to take a long or see what the market shows if we get a push down or a clear push up just showing where momentum goes um, not forcing anything you can see the price is just quite indecisive at the moment very corrective and then we see it's kind of pushing down here um, the thing here is it's pushing down it's made lower lows here but it closed higher so it's still something that i'm not so keen on there's a difference between it pushing down and then this candle it's just it's just momentum not being clear and there's a lack of clarity in where the market's actually going so i still sort of even though it's pushing down it's still correctively pushing down if that makes sense so that's why i've boxed this area off because there is a trade that you could take in this region especially as we start to form sort of this low here and then a trade on the inside bar that's a potential trade but it's just one of those valid ones that i don't get involved in i know other people do um, and it's one of those ones that sort of play out and go on to make percentage but it's just one of those more valid trades where it's coming from more corrective price action if you guys know and watch my videos you know that i always take it from impulsive uh, candles or clear clear momentum this is not clear momentum to me personally uh, even though we did have the wicks in the mini sort of corrective phase um personally i don't feel comfortable to be taking more of a valid entry uh, but it's one of those ones that do end up playing out and you know banks uh, a bit of percentage and that's pretty much it for euro dollar all right so now let's look over euro yen uh pretty much one trade for the first half of the month this is actually quite a simple one to to sort of break down we've basically been making these ascendings push down ascendings and then we had a very nice clear push down so as you guys know my criteria for entry very simple these at least two strong impulsive candles this is so clear compare that to this there's such a difference between that sort of impulsive candle and the one that's up here um so that was quite nice we've had this such a clear corrective structure uh, for those who trade patterns ascending pattern ascending um formation nature ascending channel and then we had a break and either again you could take the retest on this level um but you can see that this formation played out first getting on on the retrace guys it's literally the same thing over and over again and there's multiple ways to obviously trade and you can use multiple time frames but over a large sample of data over time i know that this way that i'm trading um, is profitable and it works and it works well with my personality and um, it really reduces emotional trading because it's just literally either waiting for the retest or waiting for that formation or this formation um, so we got in we had this inside bar then we had the counter trend candle we had a push up then we had our bearish candle let's just come back here um, at this point we will be in a 15 pip stop loss and if we just play it forward again we are quite weighted because we where, where do we come from ascending structure ascending nature and then we had the two impulsive candles the only thing obviously that i'll be wary of is that we are at this slow so price may tend to to move around before it drops or eventually take us out but then we can see and evaluate how we react on this level so at that point that's what i was thinking of in this scenario but i would still take the trade here and if for some reason it's still corrective i'll be happy to take it again on this level if it starts to shoot up and then completely come back into this corrective structure then that's when i would not be interested um, so that's just something that i was keeping in mind when i was looking at the charts and yeah so we're in this trade and again the mindset is if we went when we break this low here or if we break this low then we'll just move and reduce our stop and you can see price does range around a little bit 
and we do start to push down. I had to manually close at 1.86% because there was news for, uh, like red restricted news for funded Eptumo traders. Uh, so I ended up actually closing this. It, I think it does move down. Um, but yeah, I've managed to bank 1.86% on that. And um, price just then continues to trickle and eventually does get taken out. But yeah, 1.86% is what I managed to capitalize on. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much the trades from my main top three pairs, Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, Euro yen for the sort of first half of uh, September. I would do wanna do more trading stuff like chart work. Um, also mix in with some like day in the life vlogs of what I get up to. We had a pretty good start of the month. So that's why I kind of wanted to, to do some chart work, some analysis, even though it's sort of the same thing that I'm always talking about, like, you know, impulsive corrective, two impulsive candles or like, you know, valid areas, uh, where do we come from? My language is pretty much similar in every video, but um, I hope if you are sort of taking note, you'll notice that it's very, very all similar in how I trade and it's very uh, sort of systematic and that's how I like to keep it. I think that gives me the edge in the market because it doesn't allow like too much room for discretion. Um, but I, I think there'll always be some sort of discretion in the strategy that I'm trading just because as you're evolving and as the markets are evolving and the more time you spend in the market, the more time your plan will, will change and evolve. So it's never so, so, so strict. Um, you'll need to know when impulsive is impulsive and when corrective is corrective. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that chart work stuff. And if you guys want more of that kind of video, then let me know. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. And again, I'm so sorry that this took about three weeks to <laughs> to upload. I know like in the beginning I was like, ah, sorry, it's been two weeks now. I, <laughs> I left the country and here we are, but um, yeah. Thought I'd get a video done, even if it was iPhone and currently like in a hotel room. But, um, but yeah, hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. I will not bow down. Keep putting me off, I'm not gonna change my mind. Your head's strong for